Hello and welcome to online worship here at Pilgrim Lutheran Church in Marysville, Michigan on this Sunday, October 11th, 2020. Today we return to the Gospel of Matthew where we find a parable from Jesus about a wedding banquet. And we remember that we are invited and called, invited to God's heavenly feast and called to live accordingly, to live into this wonderful grace and love that God gives us. Church, today we continue our stewardship campaign as well, and you'll hear from a member, Colleen Skank, about her experience with generosity. And we thank her for her willingness to share that with us today. October 25th, we will celebrate Reformation Sunday, and we invite you to wear red, whether you're at home, whether you're gathered in your car for drive-in worship, or whether you're gathered in the sanctuary for indoor worship. And we will remember the Reformation, where we have kind of come from, but also where we are heading as a church, celebrating that we reform not only then, but always. The next week is All Saints Sunday, where we honor the saints among us and the saints who have gone before us. So if you have the name of somebody in your family or close to you who's been baptized or who has died in the last year, since last All Saints, please submit their name to the church office by email or by phone call. And with that, church, let us now prepare our hearts for worship.
Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know these things that are right, and by your merciful guidance help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with the reading of the Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent others, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves, have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroying those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guest, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our loving God, the one who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. Siblings in Christ, have you ever shown up to an event or a party and quickly realized how underdressed you were? I remember one time where this happened to me, a fresh new seminarian. Just over four years ago, in the heat of summer, I made the move to Bexley, a small suburb of Columbus, Ohio. And I did this to kick off my seminary education with summer intensive Greek. After my first week of intense Greek work, we were heading into the weekend. And wanting to go to church, I decided that on Sunday, I was going to attend the ELCA congregation that was walking distance from the seminary. Now, quick background. I grew up attending a rural, small-town church that had no air conditioning in the sanctuary. In the heat of summer, we would dress a little more casually to help keep us cool. After all, the only way to cool down the church was to open the windows and let the smell of the dairy farm just across the street in. This being summer and all, I decided to do as I always had. I put on a nice pair of shorts and a polo shirt and headed to church at Christ Lutheran in Bexley. After arriving and having acknowledged the beautiful sanctuary that I was now in, I noticed two things. First, I noticed how chilly it was. As it turns out, there are churches out there who have air-conditioned sanctuaries. And coinciding with that, I quickly realized that I was well underdressed. Most men who were in in attendance on that day had suits or sport coats. Talk about being underdressed. I know that I am not alone in this experience, apparently, This has been a struggle over several millennia, as seen in this morning's Gospel. Our Gospel lesson this week contains yet another parable from Jesus. This week we are no longer in a vineyard, but rather at a wedding banquet. We see that the king struggles to get his guests to attend. 
He sends his slaves to collect the guests, but they don't show up. In fact, instead of attending this feast of celebration, this feast of food and libation, they choose to go elsewhere. The story is actually quite dark, if you read it, as the slaves are killed and the people are then punished. We read that the city was burned as a result of the king's anger. He eventually invites everyone from the town into the wedding banquet which is really quite a beautiful image, but this beauty is short-lived. We read that the king came in to see the guests and he noticed a man who was there not wearing a wedding robe. The king had this man bound by hand and by foot and threw him out into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. As we look at this parable, it seems that the people invited to the wedding feast simply don't respect and honor this wedding banquet, perhaps even its host and those being honored this day. First, so many don't even bother to show up. Many see their needs and their stuff to be of more value or of more importance than this wedding celebration. Then we add that when people did begin to show up, at least one person didn't bother to show up in the proper attire. It should be an absolute honor to be invited to this wedding celebration, but people squander this invitation. They worry more about themselves, their desires, their comfort. Now we know that the Bible is rich with feast and banquet imagery. In our beloved Psalm 23, we read that God, our shepherd, prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies, where our cups are running over. We gather together as church around the sacrament of Holy Communion, where we believe Jesus is truly present, knowing that it is but a foretaste of the feast to come. God invites us to a heavenly banquet unlike any other. God desires for us to hear the word of God, to experience the grace of God, and to shine the love of God in the world. We are invited to this feast, but, but not unlike the guests in our parable this morning, we can easily lose sight of the gravity of this invitation. We often put ourselves and our priorities over this invitation to live as God's disciples, invited to the heavenly banquet. How often do we ignore God's gracious invitation to instead do what we desire to do? We know that we don't always show up when God invites us. We aren't always dressed for the occasion. We so often fail to acknowledge the gravity of the banquet God has invited us to, the banquet of eternal life as a result of God's grace and love for each and every one of us. Let's think about this. How often do we wake up and immediately give thanks to God for the life we have and always will have as a result of Christ's death on that cross? How often do we put God above ourselves in our daily lives? How often are we the light of the world, shining hope and love to those around us? The Good News Church is that we know that God, our Good Shepherd, the host of our heavenly banquet, continues to reach out in love and in care. God continues to show up in unexpected ways, inviting us to be in relationship with God and to live as God's beloved disciples. On the cross, our Savior said once and for all that we are beloved children invited to the grand feast that is to come. The good news is that this invitation is for everyone. Yes, even those we disagree with, even our enemies. The invitation is open to us, to you, and to me. Church, may we live with hope, knowing that this is our reality, 
that we will gather around a feast greater than any other with God as our host, welcoming us with open arms. And church, may we also live accordingly. Matthew, throughout his gospel, shows people what discipleship looks like. And here we see that it is about more than simply accepting the invitation. God invites us not because we earned it, but rather for one simple yet beautiful reason. Because God loves us. God loves us and calls us together to hear the word preached, to receive forgiveness from our sins, and to go out into the world to invite others to this banquet. Just showing up is not what God desires. Discipleship, our walk in faith, is about more than that. God invites us to live into this promise of life, to experience the love God has for us, and to do something about it. God wants us to take this journey in faith seriously. Church, this is not about checking a box. It's not about RSVPing to the great feast that is to come. It is about more. It is about experiencing and living into the love of God and sharing that love with all of those we meet. It is about being the light of the world and the salt of the earth. It is about sitting at a table in the presence of our enemies and seeing them not with anger or hate but rather with acknowledgement that they too are beloved children of God. You see, church, we are both invited and called. Invited to God's banquet and called to live into this beautiful reality every single day. Church, I have received I have seen a glimpse of this in my first few months here at Pilgrim. I have seen so many people respond in faithful and beautiful ways to all that is going on in the world and in our community here, living out their faith as God's disciples. Though we were unable to gather indoors, we continued forward as church, gathering online and outdoors. Though it was tough, though it is still tough, as we are by no means back to normal. We continue to gather to hear the word preached. We continue to strive to be a source of hope and of love in our world. We continue to strive to look beyond ourselves and our desires, pointing instead to the God who loves us in ways we cannot even imagine. Church, Always remember that you are God's beloved. Remember that you are worthy and you are invited to the heavenly banquet that God hosts. In church, may we all take that invitation seriously. May we clothe ourselves appropriately to share this loving invitation with all of those we meet, so that all may taste and see that the Lord is good. And all God's people said, Amen.
everyone, Colleen here. The Stewardship Committee asked me to talk about generosity. Now, most of us, when we hear the word generosity, we think of money right away. But I want to talk to you about our time and talents today. And I'm going to read out of the book of Ephesians to start off. Ephesians 5 tells us that Jesus equips his people for acts of service so that the body of Christ can be built up. And in Ephesians 2, Paul writes, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. This tells me we cannot do good works to earn salvation, but because salvation is free and we follow Jesus Christ, we want to do good works. So I'm going to just tell you a little bit of my own experiences. First, I want to start out with the quilters. I joined that group a good while ago. I'm not always there because of other things that I have to do, but I thoroughly enjoy it. Why? Because there's good fellowship. Before coronavirus, we would have what you call free therapy. And it's sort of cute because we would gather about halfway through our projects and we would just encourage each other. We'd laugh, sometimes show compassion. So it brought joy to me anyway. My second experience is with <clears throat> sending out cards. Most of you know I paint and I like to copy my paintings and make cards out of them. And I hope that those of you that receive one give a little bit of joy because I really feel joy in sending them. Another experience that I have, but this happened many years ago, and I hope you will see that God does have a sense of humor. I volunteered at another church many years ago to lead the children's choir. Now you have to know something about me. I can't sing very well, and I have hearing impaired problems. So think of this, a choir director can't sing, can't hear very well, but it's willing to work with children. Now the joy comes because the kids caught on and they wanted to prove to me that they could sing and they sang loud so I could hear it. Isn't that great? So joy, not only from the children and their parents listening to them, but for me. So I want to sort of end my little spiel here with words from a very well-liked Christmas children's song. It goes like this. I don't want to be a Pharisee because they're not fair, you see? I don't want to be a Sadducee because they are so sad, you see? And I don't want to be a hypocrite because they're just not hip with it. I want to be a sheep, you see, because I pray to the Lord for my soul to keep. I want to be a sheep and follow Jesus. Have a good day. Join together in confidence of God's grace. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need, responding to each petition with the words, receive our prayers. That even through global sorrows, the church can rejoice in your salvation. That bishops, pastors, deacons, and church leaders be sustained for their ministries. That churches find strength in ecumenical and interracial collaboration that church members resolve their conflicts in peace, and that all the baptized find ways in this difficult time to uphold what is honorable and just. We pray for the church, O oh God, our shepherd. Receive our prayers. That national conflicts be resolved without warfare and destruction that the work of diplomats and international peace workers be honored, that leaders of nations attend to the needs of the poor, that our country be preserved from discord, rancor, and violence, that the election process will be just, that prejudice based on ethnicity, skin color, and economic status be ended, and that justice will prevail in our laws and through our courts. We pray for peace and justice, O oh God, our ruler. Receive our prayers. 
that the plague of the coronavirus will subside, that all who are sick with the virus, from rulers to refugees, be healed, that people living with fear be comforted, that medical workers be supported, and medical supplies be made everywhere available, and that a vaccine be developed and fairly distributed. We pray during this pandemic, O God, our healer, receive our prayers. That those who suffer from want be assisted, that those without work find jobs, that children be educated, that ministries of care be strengthened to feed those who hunger and those without homes, that extremism be lessened and a spirit of cooperation be nurtured. And for all who are sick, whose names we call out now aloud and in our hearts, We pray for all in need, O God, our guardian. Receive our prayers. That you receive our thanks for all those who have died in the faith. That when facing our own death, you give us hope. And that you grant us your peace throughout our days. We praise and pray to you. O oh God, our homeland, receive our prayers. Into your hands, merciful God, we offer ourselves and all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today at all of our services, our indoor, our outside slash drive-in, and this online service, we are blessing a ministry that happens here at Pilgrim, and that's our quilt ministry. So today we are going to bless the hands who have made these quilts, the hands who will see that they're given out, and the hands who will receive them. And before we do that, let us read from Luke chapter 10. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all of your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite when he came to that place and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. 
Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. We'll continue with the blessing of the quilts, and periodically I will prompt you to respond with the words, Jesus, teach us to love our neighbors. God, you have called us to go and do likewise as we reach out to our neighbors around the world. Send forth your spirit today as we call upon you to bless our work and make it holy. Jesus, teach us to love our neighbors. God, we give you thanks for those who have generously shared their resources in order to make these quilts possible. Move us by their example to live generous lives. Jesus, teach us to love our neighbors. Thank you, God, for the hands that have made and assembled these quilts. May each compassionate touch be known to those who receive them as an expression of your love. Jesus, teach us to love our neighbors. God, we lift before you the staff and partners of Lutheran World Relief, of various nursing homes, police and fire stations, the Children's Hospital of Michigan, St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Warren, and all other places who will distribute these quilts around the world and within our communities. Give them strength and encouragement to do this work with, and guide them as they reach our neighbors who are the farthest away. Jesus, teach us to love our neighbors. Finally, God, we pray for our neighbors around the world who will receive these quilts. Neighbors we have never met, neighbors who are far away, neighbors who are near to us, neighbors who, like us, long for your grace and mercy. May these quilts wrap our neighbors in love and fill them with the hope and peace that is only found in you. And together we say, Amen. Church, receive the blessing Mother and God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Amen.